to be accountable. We want more of us to be moving without being told to move. We want more of us to follow his instructions. It's in the worship family. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I just worship you, Lord. I worship you all. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for continually holding me accountable, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for giving me instructions to follow. I worship you for that right now, Lord. Lord, I even worship you for the tribulations that I go through. Because you give me the strength. You give me the protection. Do the worship. I worship you right now, Lord. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. But nothing before you, Lord. I just worship you. I glorify you, Lord Jesus, because you're worthy. All by yourself, Lord. I don't I don't need help from me. I need you, Jesus. I just need more of you. Less of me, more of you, less of me, more of you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, the presence of God is always in this place. But are we always in this place? Let's get in the place. Let's meet him on his territory. Let's worship him without distraction. Let's worship him without care and worry or reward. Let's just worship him just because of all the things he's already done, all the touchstones, all the remembering of his goodness, all the healing, all the deliverance, all the saving. Let's just worship him for that right now. That's enough just to give him all the praise, all the glory. All the all the dead that have been risen, that have, that have risen from the dead, and so that's enough to praise him right there. All the all the all the spirits that have been cast out and bound under our foot, that's enough to worship him right there. Because we have the power, we have the authority. We can worship him right now just for the acts of the apostles and the example that they gave us on how to go and duplicate the process of making disciples. That's enough to worship him right there. And in the worship, we forget about everything. We get out of the way. We allow God to be God all by himself. And we do what we're told to do by following his instructions. So I just worship you for more instruction right now, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that, that, that your word abounds. We thank you today that your word corrects. We thank you today. We worship you today that your word anoints. But, Lord, we, all, oh, we just magnify you and worship you right now that your word reveals the truth on how to be successful in the walk of Christ. So we thank you for that today. We decrease of self. Lord, we die. Lord, we, we, we give to you. We allow everything to be taken away that is not in line with your will. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we give you all the honor for what you're about to do. We give you all the praise for what you've already done. And we glorify you, Lord, for the word that you're about to expound, the lesson that you give us to walk by, when, right now, in the name of Jesus. Continue to bless New Destiny Ministries. Every ministry connected to New Destiny is under this prayer. We say New Destiny, but I mean now, I mean the liberal Democrat, I mean everyone that is connected is under the umbrella of new destiny. So this prayer go, goes out to everyone. Lord, continue to bless our family. Continue to open up our eyes and give us the revelation knowledge to see the mysteries, to comprehend your word. Lord, anoint every man and woman of God that is connected to this ministry. Grow their ministry. Prosper their finances. Put their lives in line with you as you would have it to be from heaven to earth because it's already done. 
Lord, we pray this prayer that it goes under the, under the authority that not our will be done, but your will be done. We say yes to your will, yes to your way, and most definitely yes to your word. Have your way today, Jesus. We thank you, we praise you, and magnify you. In all in agreement said, amen, amen, amen. Well, good afternoon, family. It's another provoked Friday. I'm excited, as always, to, to just be connected and joined with like-minded believers. When the Word says something, we confirm that that is the truth, that when the Word is spoken, we line up and we change our circumstances. That's family. When things are going right, we depend on one another. When things are going good, we bless one another. When they're middle to middle, we depend and we rely and we confide in one another. That's family. So I pray for us today, family, that as we go forth and as we continue to get molded through the acts of the apostles, that we see this lesson is just for a time as this. The new church that he's building in you, the new church that he's building in us, the new church that he's building in them, the new church, the new church must be built on the foundation of where it started with the acts of the apostles. So we thank him today. That we could go deeper. Say, go deeper. That we could reach farther. Say, farther. And we could do it right now. Say, now. Don't be scared. You, just by you saying now, yes, it will. It will put you in the realm of having to do something with right now. But don't be afraid. He's waiting for us to step into the now. Right with. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we're, we're, uh, today we're on chapter 19. And uh, 19 has a lot of nuggets in it. We are going to enjoy this, this chapter here, and, uh, and we're going to let God have his way. Amen? Lord, reveal your word to us today, Lord. Make it plain, make it simple, make it clear. Give us the revelation knowledge to, to, to develop principles that will guide us in the walk, in the talk, and in the going of, and making of disciples. We thank you today. It is done, finished, and complete. In Jesus' name, right now, amen. Verse 1, and it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came into Ephesus. And finding some disciples, he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, into what then were you baptized? So they answered, it was John's baptism. See, first of all, Paul is returning back to Ephesus. And then when he arrives, he, he runs into all kinds. I mean, he's known now. You know, he's, he's returning back to where he came. He planted the church there. And when he returned, there's dozens of followers of Jesus who didn't even know that there was a Holy Spirit. See, Jesus had saved people before the Holy Spirit was, was, was delivered. And that, well, let's go back to just, if you don't mind, if we could just go to uh, uh, Mark uh, 16. And, and you don't have to go. I, I, got, I have it. You can just let me read to you today. But if you remember, Mark 16 is when now he had returned and he left them with the comforter of the Holy Spirit. But before that, there had been a lot of conversions of Gentiles. Remember when they sent out the 72 by 2? The Holy Spirit hadn't even been, uh, hadn't been even brought to this surface yet. That, that wasn't a part of the principle yet. So these believers that Paul in, in, in encountered had been saved by Jesus. They didn't even have any knowledge of the Holy Spirit. Paul then, you know, helps them to understand that then baptizes them in the name of Jesus. So they had went through the water baptism. And what this is telling us is, is that even though there's some people out there that have been saved, we may have to go back out, family, and do some recommitment. We may have to make some old phone calls. Now, this word is for us when? Right now. So we want to look at the example that came from Paul, but we want to now transform that win right now into something that we could go forth with a, with a principle 
to move forward. So the first thing I see is that, that, you know, for us, even though we've been on this road and even though we've been evangelizing and even we've been, we've been preaching the word of God, there may be some territory that we got to go back over just to make sure that people got the fullness of what the word, because the word elevates in the man that it, that it receives. When you first received Kichi Kichi, you didn't know it was Kachi Kachi. You had to now develop a relationship to now get into knowing that Kichi, oh, for you guys that don't know, and most should, Kichi Kichi is like Kachi Kachi that is really a banana. But that is communication. That is relationship. That is growth. So when you first got the word, now I know everybody can testify this, that the word you spoke on day one is a total different word now that you're speaking. Some of those sermons that we went over, some of those 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 uh, evangelist trips that we made may have, have to be re- rehashed to give people the information that they didn't have when it was available. Amen. I hope that helps somebody there. It helped me. Verse 2, he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you were baptized? And they said to him, we have not so much as heard of whether, whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, into what were you baptized? So they said to him, John's baptism, which we all know was with water. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with a bapti- baptism of repentance, saying to the, the people that they should be, believe in him who would come after him that is on Christ. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. When? Immediately. See, people who have been given the word, the truth, when you go back and you give them the the, the phase two, because some people are still on phase one, once we graduate them to phase two, when did they receive it? It didn't say that it took them three weeks, four weeks, five weeks. He said they were then baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. When? Immediately. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Look at the now. It doesn't take a person to go through a 30-week process training to have to get or receive the Holy Spirit. Once they have stood in submission to say, here I am, I believe believe that Jesus Christ is my, my personal Lord and Savior. I confess him right now with my mouth. With my heart, they are immediately, family, immediately available for you to pray the prayer of receiving the Holy Spirit. And immediately when they they receive it, they what? They speak in other tongues. This is the word. It didn't say that, well, it took, and when Paul had laid hands on them, it took them 10 years to now. No, it was all in consistency. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. When, in verse 7, it says, now, whoo, Jesus, that's my favorite word, now the men were about 12 in all. And he went into the synagogues and spoke boldly for three months. Spoke boldly for three months. Stop right there. Sometimes we got, you know, some, sometimes we, we, we do it too much, family. Sometimes we take this anointing and the power that God has given us to the authority of Jesus Christ, and we everywhere. Tell one of us to stay in, a, in one church for three months and just minister, and that's not your church. We feel like we have to move around. Look what Paul did. Paul went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading concerning the things of the kingdom of God. That word persuading, that means he repetitiously taught the word over and over and over again, the same word, because you cannot try to get me to believe in one thing and come with me with something else. Persuading tells me that I have to stick on the same thing that I have to master, say master. See, we have to master this walk. We have to master this, this word. We have to master these principles that we can't no longer just say, okay, I got it, I'm done, and move on. We, gotta, we have to understand that this, these lessons, these principles are meant to be so 
repetitious in our lives is that there's no question on what your answer or your action will be. He persuaded concerning the things of the kingdom of God. He didn't tell them about their, their banking. He didn't tell them about their, their, their basketball team. He didn't, he didn't persuade them. The only thing that he was concerned about, and this goes back to God being the source of everything, is that because it could have said, well, he persuaded them about their, their, their families and about this and about that and about that. No, he concerned them about the kingdom of God. Now, this is very important because it goes back to what we teach, is that God has to be the source of everything. Before we can teach anything else, we must teach, persuade on the kingdom of God. Not the kingdom of reason, not the kingdom of maybes, not the kingdom of coulda, wouldas, and shouldas, but in the kingdom of of God, not the king of pulpits, not the kingdom of pastors, and the kingdom of this, but the kingdom of God. And it wasn't just good enough with one message. It had to be preached over repetitiously. You can't persuade someone with one message. And then next week you have a new message. And a new message. And none of these messages connect. We must persuade by teaching the kingdom of God. It may take a three-month series in some churches. It may take some six-month series in some churches. And guess what? It may take some lifelong principles that are set in standard in churches. See, we talked about in the, in, in the Acts of the Apostles that one of the most prolific lessons that they teach is oneness. Same language, same praise, same word. But if they were all getting different words, how would they be unified on the word? I'm not knocking guest preachers, and I'm not knocking conferences, and I'm not, believe me, I'm not, because I help and do and work in the ministry too. But when we are protected of our houses, we have to be very particular on what we let in. What word we let go forth. Yes, it may be a good word for down there 10 miles away, but in this house, the word must be consistent with the kingdom of building, building the kingdom of God. We, gotta, we, have, to, we have to get in a, in a systematic uh, habit of not rushing the word of God. Just like when you're eating a meal, it says you must chew it 37 times. Then you swallow it, then it's digested, and then whatever else happens, happens. That's too much information. But see the process? You can't just gobble it all down. What happens? You get sick. But you like that food, so you eat that food what? Over and over and over again until you develop a habit of chicken. Verse 9. But when some were hardened and, and, and did not believe, but spoke evil by, of the way before the multitude, he departed from them and withdrew his disciples, reasoning daily in the, in the schools of Tyrannus. Look at that right there. He didn't fight them. He didn't go against them. He didn't argue with them. What it says, he moved on. See, family, we got to know when to move on. Opposition is not bad, but it's detrimental to the walk of making other disciples. If you're making disciples and they can, all they can see is dissension and all they can see is confusion, you, know, you, you think they're going to follow? We have to learn. Now, look at the example Paul's given us. You got to move around. Sometimes you got to count your losses and say, you know what, enough is enough. I have to go because there's greater work to do. You, we get so caught up in one situation that we miss the opportunity to keep moving. When? Now. And that's the, Bible. the Bible says that he departed, and this continued for two years, so that all who dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus Christ, both Jews and Greeks. Look at the church grow. If you go, if you continue to give, if you continue to go make disciples, 
The church will grow. Your church will grow. Our church will grow. Verse 11. Now, God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from the body to the sick and the disease left them and the evil spirits went out of them. Then some of the illiterate Jew- Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus Christ over those who had evil spirits, saying, we, ad- we adjure you by the Jesus who Paul preaches. Also, there were, were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest who did so. And the evil spirits gathered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? I wasn't going to say this, but yes, I am. You know, the, whole, the, the evil spirits got more sense than we do. People come lay, lay their hands on you, give you a word, and just because they got the right suit on, just because they hang with the right clique, we expect that that's, they are from Jesus. We have to be more protected on who we allow into our environments. You've heard me say this before. If it's not working, or, or, or if, it's, if there's no productivity coming out of it, you must question. If somebody's in your life and they're nothing but a draw on you, they're nothing but a but 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 a uh, uh, a liability. Yes, they get up in the morning. Yes, they 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 scream Jesus. They scream. Yes, they do all the things that the, the religious people would like to see. But do they really represent Jesus? Have you done your homework? Look right there. The evil spirit looked up at him and said, you know what? Yeah, we know Jesus. We'd have been up out of here. We'd have left soon. We see Paul coming down the street, but they let them get right up on him, and I would hate to see what happens after that. This up. Uh, oh, verse 14. Also, there were seven spirits of Scyria and the, and, the, and the Jewish chief priests who did also. And evil spirits answered and said to them, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? Then the man in whom the evil spirits was le- uh, leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them so that, they, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Family, we must be fully armored. We must be fully in line with God and his word and the kingdom. That's why we keep coming back all beat up, less than we went out, no victory, no testimony, because we've allowed ourselves to step out without being ready, without being fully prepared, without going out to fight the battle instead of Winning the battle. Preparation, family, is key. It's personal. It's something that us as warriors of the body of Christ have to take personal. We have to take these these principles and be molded, not into what we would like, but what God molded from day one. He molded us in his own image. We are to look like him. Why would the word tell us that we were molded in his image if we weren't supposed to like, look like him? Why wouldn't we have the same spirit in us, but he breathed in us the breath of his life? Preparation. That's all it is. Preparation and following instructions. I have to say that again. Following instructions is so important because we'll listen to anybody in the streets. If they tell us, well, I'm going to do this for you if you just do this, we'll follow instructions to get a, a quick reward. Something comes through God, we question it. We wonder how, why, where, who. We don't give God all the honor, all the glory. We get... We give him all the, the complaints and all the, 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 the reasons why we shouldn't do what he's telling us to do. 
verse 17. This became known both to all the Jews and the Greeks dwelling in Ephesus. And fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. See, sometimes the stuff got to happen before people really are, are ready to recognize that Jesus is real. I, and I know that none of us on the line because we all, we all, you know, got our own little perfect uh, relationship. But you know that, that most people in churches are waiting to see Jesus come out of the chilling every Sunday. And they sit there in anticipation, not believing what you say through the word, not seeing the move and the action of the Holy Spirit. They are waiting to see Jesus right now. And they got this, they got this, bif, this big offering to give. They got this big gift, this big tithe that is when they see him, they'll move. That's not God. God is looking for us to what? Believe in him by not seeing him. Trust in him by not hearing a, a, a verbal word. Following instructions just because we've been instructed. Who said it? Why they say it? Well, why are they telling me what to do? I don't know. Why are they telling me what to do? God said it. We should obey it. I mean, we remember in Romans 13, it says that God has appointed all authority. That means good or bad. Well, he's a rotten judge. He was still appointed because the Bible says a little, a little farther in 13 that if you do not respect authority as it's under God, you disrespect God. Not yesterday, not right then, immediately. And so our lessons, our principles have to be designed that people can start to Experience change immediately. Our, our goal must be to enlighten people and to, and to equip them to walk this thing alone. Everything I see from all of the lessons, from all of the teachings, from all of the examples was trying to show us how you could do this thing one-on-one -on -one independently. Yes, yes, there's power in numbers. Yes, we have families and groups. But if we're not all individually sound, who's gonna, who's, how are you going to know where the weak link is? How are we going to know where the attack is sneaking in at if you're not on one accord? If, if somebody can say a certain thing and it's not an agreement, but you still say amen, how's that agreement? How's that family? How's that oneness? How's that saying that it's God the source? Not me, not you, not what you said, not what I wrote, but it's God. Seventeen, it says, again, I'm reading that again. It says, this became known both to Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus. And fear fell on them. And then the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Uh, just something's wrong with that for me. Uh, it's, a good, it's, it's a good example that they eventually came. But why are so many of us waiting for fear to come? For something so that now we feel that he's going to, that now we know that we know that we know that he's going to cast us to hell. Or that he's going to uh, disown us. Oh, now we want to run to the cross instead of being willing to come to the cross. And it starts with us leaders. It starts with us pastors and us bishops and us apostles and us prophets. That when we go out and make disciples, we make equipped disciples. We make disciples that are assets and not liabilities. We make disciples that it doesn't take a 10-page book, a flight in, and someone to stay back to watch them because if you're on one accord, some things you just don't, you don't even have to ask the question because you're on one accord. Yes, I'm glad they made it when fear fell on them. But for this day, for this move, we can't wait till fear comes. We got to get it now through love, through joy, through rejoicing him. 18, and many of them who had believed came confessing and telling of their deeds. Also, many of those who, were, who practiced magic brought their books together and buried them in sight of all. And they counted up the value of them, and it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. 
Okay, I got to throw this out there because this is a question that you never hear anybody talk about. There is people who practice other things in Christianity. There Watch are people out, out there. Watch out your things out there, Pastor. I, I'm sorry, but but I got to keep the Bible just brought it out, so I got to I got to keep it real. Listen, there are people out there that are practicing other methods of belief. Come on, everybody is not saying yes, Lord. Everybody All out right. there is not praising Jesus. Uh-huh. Well, that's what the Bible just said then. It, it had to be somebody that was doing witchcraft for them to bring the books of witchcraft in. Come on now. So if it was going on, if it was going on in, family, you better believe it's going on now. All right. Every church you walk in, every, and I, and please, this, this segment, throw this on. P2P Ministries alone. Don't blame nobody else. Don't get nobody. Don't get mad at nobody else. Get this all on me because I'm putting this out there today. But every church yeah, you walk don't in. Don't call me. Don't call me. Please. Every church out there is not practicing Jesus Christ. Come on. That's why we have to be so protected on who we invite in and who we go in with. All right. Oh yeah, I know. I know he got the big check, and I know he got a new building, and I know he gonna give you this. But is he really serving God? Come on. We wonder Pray. why it feels like it's a spell over your life. Oh Jesus, we wonder why we're doing everything that God told us to do, but the fruit is not coming because you may be having some curses on your life right now just because of the people you let in your environment. My God. You wonder why you you know that God called, oh whew, geez, I gotta say here I gotta say this one too you know God called you to plant a church but wherever you at you can't get out of it ask your question mm. ask yourself why mm. if we're meant to be if we're meant to make disciples to go then that should be the first thing we want to see them do is what go all right some people some, you know there's people caught in churches there's so much bondage they can't leave and we wonder and we and we say you know we we give it. But we, we know that we got to stop blaming Jesus for stuff like this and understand yeah. that there are other forces, that there are other entities that practice other things. Because it's not always what it is, but, but what it looks like it is. If it looks pretty, we just accept it to be pretty. If it's shiny, we, we just say it's shiny. But you never go and, and research and develop and, 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 and recognize who is who is around us. Why am I? Why this? Uh, this has to be the question today. Why am I not being blessed the way I'm supposed to be blessed? Because I know I give God all. I know I give Him all my money. I know I give Him all my time. But I'm still in a rut. He didn't mean for you to be like that. Because the word says that when you sow good seed into good ground, you will receive good harvest. See, we got to start doing some checks around here. We got to start going a lot deeper, asking a lot more questions. We stop at you, even Jesus. Oh hell yeah, hello, blah, 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 blah. speak a little tongue. We bring them in, and we're ready to go. Mm. Thank you. We, come on, Ooh, I, I don't know why I'm on this today. But we bring people in and let them skip over 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 new membership class. Because he can sing, because he can play the piano, because he can do this, because he can do that, or because he he chose this, or he tied that. Oh, no, come on, brother. We, you don't have to go through them seven weeks. Come on, I'm going to get you through the back door. Do you know what you just let in through the back door? Because mm. if you don't spend no time with them, you don't know their language. All right. If you don't have a relationship with them, you don't know what they say after you go. Mm-hmm. And you don't know the prayer that they're really putting on you. That goes back to relationship. That goes back to being in order. That goes back to staying in the position to order. have a God speak order. to my heart. It's called order. Because when right. you're in order, you can see, see. See, the Bible says that where there is darkness, it cannot comprehend light. If you are always in the light and darkness try to come, you're going to see it a mile away. If your relationship is in line with what? God and the kingdom. You won't be going through some of the things that we're going through. Because we don't go by what it looks like, what it sounds like, what it, what, it, what it feels like, what it tastes like. We go by what it's like. Because you know the spirit by what? 
the spirit. Hands down. Go to switch that one out the way because there's no great there's a, there is no great area in that statement. If I know you, I know you by the spirit. I don't want to know how strong you are and how good you play basketball or how fine you are or how much money you have. That's not the spirit. Those are the carnal things of this world. Okay, I bet you everybody on this line knows one person that you could you just attest to him or her being a Christian because of what they wear, what they drive, and, and the Bible they carry. But you never right. ask deep questions to say, man, what do you do Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday? Mm. Or get in their car and press their presets on the radio. Mm. That's the first. Do you want to know what people listen to? Get in their car and press presets. I bet you one station is Christian and the rest is all over the place. Mm-hmm. But we don't need to take time to ask questions. All Family, right. if you ask questions, you get a answer. Even if they don't give you one, you got an answer that that person is not trustworthy. Mm-hmm. Got to move around. Amen. Woo! I have to say this one more time. Because because we know from on this end of the, uh, from this part of the uh, it's all over, but they say it's in the south. There's some churches that's that's practicing some things that ain't talking about the blood of Jesus. It ain't just in New Orleans, baby. It ain't just in New Orleans. It's all over the place. There's some people that we fellowship with. Let me keep it 100 with you. There's some people that we fellowship with that are not about Jesus Christ. They look like it. They sound like it, but they are not. Like Jesus Christ. Practice is that wrong? Which... No, that's not. It's right for you to want to know. It's right for you to be accountable. It's right for you just don't look. Don't fall for anything. Ooh, that was a good word, but you don't see no life in it. And everything you touch is crumbling. But you're doing everything that God has told you to do, to the best of your ability. You should be blessed. The next question should be, why not? Because it's not God. It's our fault because we allow so many things to get in our business. We tell people about our desires and our prayers before we tell God. And we wonder why they never get to God. Family, we got to get better at this thing. We got to start building a family. Listen to this. Family that we trust. Family that we can count on. Family that I know that if I call your number, if I don't get you, you're going to call me back. I don't have to call you. That's family. Relationship. When somebody tells me something about Evangelist Bernard, they better go another way because I already know the, the woman that I have a relationship with. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to call Evangelist Bernard. I'm going to say, well, hold on, sister. I, I, it's, it's all good. But let's get, let's get Evangelist Bernard in this thing. I tell you then, you're either going to see the truth come out one way or the other. Because so they're going to say, why you call them? You already know they're lying. You already know they're trying to plant bad seed. You See, we can catch it before it even gets started. But a lot of us will just let rumors go. We don't, we don't hold people accountable. People don't tell me much stuff, family, because the first thing they know I'm going to do is call another person. Right, wrong, or whatever. I'm going to get both parties in it, and I'm going to say, okay, now, tell me about her in her face. And we can work on it because then we can get the truth out. Then we can heal both parties. Then we can see God, God glorified instead of the church keep taking the hits of people's mistakes. People's mistakes because they're not gardening their own garden. They got other garden. They got somebody else cutting the grass. They got somebody else pruning the trees. When we are supposed to protect our own gardens. If Pastor Miracle ain't working in my garden, ain't nobody else going to get into the period. I trust her. I know she has the same heart to plant the same seeds. I know that the harvest will come because it's already good ground. It's been tilled. It's been worked. We've we deep weeded it. But let somebody else come up here and say, hey, man, y'all can go and take a week off. I got your garden for you. I, I'll, I'll just work. I don't need a day off. Because I know I have to stick with people I trust. Okay, you say, well, Pastor, how do you know that? Because if they love God like I love God, it's confirmed by the Spirit. Not by what they do, not by their offers, not by anything other than the Spirit. I'm going to move on, but I got to say that one more time. Family, let's be more aware. 
let's let's be more conscious that everything that's around you ain't for you. Some people around you is for themselves, and they use any method, any matter to get where they want to get to, even if even if it means crushing you, standing on you. Yes, 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 it's terrible. Yes, it shouldn't be that way. And it won't be that way when we get totally in line with God's word and follow the principles. Because I'm responsible for who comes in my life, not God. I'm responsible for who, who attacks me, not God. I'm, I'm, I'm responsible for who comes and kicks in my front door, not God. Man, God, why you didn't protect me? He gave us every every tool to protect ourselves. Ask the right question. Don't allow anybody just in your house. Don't let everybody see all your possessions. Don't let everybody know your vision and your dream. Because all they're there for is to rob, kill, and destroy. God will show us. When, right now, when we're in line with him in time, who he sent, why he sent them, and how long he sent them for. Because nobody's been sent to save. Everybody must grow and go higher, go farther, go somewhere else. Hey, there's a lot of land to cover. Oh, Jesus. 19. Also, many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. Well, I can't get past this. Just because somebody brought the book out and burned it didn't mean it was some books left at home. People got to go through transformation. You got to know you can trust them. You got to know that they have to prove, get a track record of trust. If we trust God as a source, we must learn how to trust people. But they must become trustworthy. That, here, let me just skip down to 20. 20. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. We write back to the same point. If you preach the word, it will go forth. We 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 kind of give our excuse ourselves excuse about the word returning to us to him void and not us. If you preach the word, the word will prevail. It will go forth. It will bless. It will anoint. It will heal. It will change if you preach the word. Twenty one. When these things were accomplished, Paul proposed in the, uh, purpose in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go into Jerusalem saying, after I have been there, I must also see Rome. See, check this out, family. You need a vacation sometime too. Sometimes you got to get out of your territory. You look, he made some stops. And he made, that was a personal statement. Don't think you just got to all be tied to ministry all the time. I know y'all saying that boy something else. He find he find a way to get the truth out of every bit of that word. But look at what it said. He went to three two places and then he made the statement that I must see Rome too. You need a vacation sometime, family. Yes, you can go on vacation and still worship God, but you need your rest too. Let let yourself off the hook. Let yourself off the hook. 22. So he sent into Macedonia two of those who ministered to him, Timothy and Erastus. But but he himself stayed in Asia for a time. See, he needed a lot of rest. And about that time, there were a great commotion about the way. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith who had made silver shrines of Diana, brought no small profit to the craftsmen. He called them together with the work workers of similar occupation, and said, men, you know that we have our pro prosperity by this trade. Moreover, you see and hear not, you hear that not only in Ephesus, but throughout almost all Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned many people, saying that they are not gods which, which are made with hands. Right there. A lot of stuff you see, you've got to call it out. Stuff you know ain't right, you got to stop being silent. Stuff that you know is not in order with God, you must speak out, even if you, even if you throw them under the bus. 
Because it's not about what people think. It's about what God thinks. If we're going to honor the kingdom of God, we must respect the kingdom of God. We must honor the kingdom of God and nothing else. Now, remember, we must do everything to what? Through love. But that doesn't mean you've got to continue to not say what you know you should have said five years ago. Oh, baby, I ain't going to just say nothing. I don't want to get in that mess. That, uh, you know what? We got to get out of that. In the world, they call it snitching. We ain't in the world. <laughs> we in the Holy Spirit, countable. See, in the world, they call it snitching because, see, somebody going to get in trouble for getting in trouble for getting in trouble. But in the spirit, we are accountable because if you do not hold yourself accountable and other people accountable, you might ask for them in the day. They may get a clean ride just because you did not hold them accountable. The Bible says that most people get away with things because they don't know. Once you get the knowledge of it, now you can be held accountable for it. And just by us holding someone accountable may be just enough to get them in line and get them on track. See, everything we do is not to tear down, it's to build up. By me holding you accountable to time, that means I'm holding myself accountable to time. And not only to time, but most of all to God. So not only, 27, so not only is this trade of, of ours in danger of falling in, in disrepute, but also the temple of the great goddess Diana may be despised and her magnificence destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worship. And when they heard this, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of Ephesians. So the whole city was filled with confusion. Remember I told you, the enemy is not here to try to kill you. He's just trying to confuse us. If he can keep us confused when we're, without being on one accord, without having unity, without the word going forth, and us saying yes and amen, he got us right where he wants us, confused, mad at each other, arguing, questioning. If I have to ask a question about you, I need you on the phone, quick. If there's a doubt that comes up, you have to be the first person I call, not somebody else. If somebody tells me about somebody, I must talk to them first. Because confusion is the gas to the fire. No understanding will destroy any relationship. And confusion usually comes from a lack of communication. Oh, a lack of communication. We just didn't want to say nothing. <laughs> I just, I didn't, I, might have, I didn't want to hurt their feelings. But you would still let them go on down the street, knowing they're going to run off the side of the road, and then say, well, I didn't know that was going to happen. But all we had to do was speak a word and say, enough is enough. Let me hold you accountable. Because you said you served the same God I served. Let me in your closet now. Let me into your life so I can understand you. Let me now uh, analyze you so I can see if you are really worthy to be in a relationship with me. Because God is going to hold me accountable for me. You can't go and say, well, let Pastor E off because he should have told me this, but I ran. Or, or he tried to tell me I wouldn't listen. That ain't, that's not going to help. I'm going to be held accountable for it. Because it's my responsibility to hold you accountable as well as letting you hold me accountable. Now, before you take this off and run off with it, let me just say this one more time. You have to be willing to be more accountable than you account for somebody else. You cannot try to get in somebody's business and keep your door shut. That's why our doors have to be open. That's why our lives have to be a one accord with God. That's why our lives have to exemplify the kingdom of God, not man. You preaching today, Jesus. Verse 30, and when Paul wanted to go in to the people, the disciples would not allow him. Then some of the uh-huh. officials of Asia who, who were, were his friends sent to him pleading that he would not venture into the theater. Some, therefore, cried one thing and some another, for the assembly was what? Confused. 
And most of them did not know why they had come together. Oh. See, if you ain't on one accord, we got people coming to meet that have no idea why they're there. When oh. everybody who comes should already be prepared to receive a word. You know, if we teach our churches, our people, our disciples, to come to church with an expectation that God is moving already, watch your, church, watch your service change. All right. if, your people, if your people are prepared to meet God, guess who they're going to find? God. If our people walk in the authority of Jesus Christ, what will we have? We will have the authority of Jesus Christ. Oh. Not of ourselves, but of Jesus Christ. Verse 32, some therefore cried one thing and some another, for the assembly was confused, and most of them did not know why they had come together. See, family, we fall for anything. One good word we heard here on the east side, we'll travel all the way to the west side not knowing what we're traveling for. We just got a little uh-huh. word. We heard of a of a major thing going on on the north side, but we live on the south side. That's $50 a gas. We'll use $50 a gas to get up there and ain't nothing there for you. Because we don't, we don't, we don't investigate. We don't take time to ask questions. That's right. We just go. We just run. And then we blame God and say, why you send me out there? That wasn't for me. You didn't even ask God. You just got in your car and went. All right. Because we don't know who to trust. We don't, we, don't, we don't rely on reliable sources. We got faulty perceptions. We fall for anything. Family, we yes. got to stop falling for anything. If it's not in the word, say no. If God, don't, if God hasn't anointed it, get out of it. If God is not blessing it and you don't see fruit coming, you better move around and go somewhere else. All right. Now, 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 now watch this. That means if you want the greatness that God has for you. But if you're, if you're used to it, because, see, that's how we get. We get so comfortable. When we know we go to church here, we get out by here, I'm at home by here, they ain't going to call me till Wednesday. If you're comfortable with that life, then I'm not talking to you today. But if you are looking to go to a place where God can use you and use you in such a way to bring others to him, this uh, family, this fight is not a personal fight. It is a family fight. We must build the kingdom of heaven on earth by making disciples. Why would you just give us the instruction to go make more disciples if the disciples you have are just enough? Mm. That was one of the most prolific instructions that he gave us was to go and make more. That lets me know that the numbers we have don't match up. That lets me know that we got to fortify and we got to get people on a better stage. That lets me know that we got to work harder. That lets me know that it does not stop, that I must continue to go and make more disciples. Because God knows we just going to take a number of us. On one accord. And say, the Bible says that he's coming back for one church. It never said that he would come, well, just because over there on the left side, they're doing okay. It didn't say oh. that the north side, the south side, or the west side would get it. He said one church. Why would he what? tell us to go make more disciples if we weren't trying to make one church? Oh. That goes back to nobody left behind. Okay, so, okay, all right, yeah, they do that over there now. Well, go over there and show them how to do it right. Oh. Well, Pastor, how do I do that? By doing it right. All you don't right. have to keep the door in and say, you're doing that. that this, is what we, this is what we normally do. We get bold. We keep the door in, and we want to cast people down, and we want to talk about them, and we want to belittle them instead of just showing them by example how to do it the right way. Because oh. when they see fruit in your yard, they're going to want some fruit in their yard too. When they see prosperity come your way, they're going to ask the question, how did you get there? And then now is the time to say, I'm glad you asked me that question, because I've been wanting to come over there and tell you is that your methods seem to be a little bit off mark for what God called you to do. All right. It didn't happen, it didn't happen in hate. You didn't hurt nobody. He came to you. But by example, by God seeing the fruit of the labor in your life and people being able to exemplify off of that, they'll come to you running. Because mm. just like misery love company, so does people, so does prosperity. Mm. We draw unto us the likenesses of our hearts. 
If your heart is God, you ain't going to have nothing but a bunch of God people around you. That's because you 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 serve only God. And he's going to line you up with people that, that confirm your heart. You know the spirit by the spirit. All right. Verse 35. And when the city clerk, yeah, and when the city clerk had quieted the crowd, he said, Men of Ephesus, what man in this is there who who does not know that the city of the Ephesians is the temple garden of the great goddess Diana, and of the image which fell down from Zeus? Therefore, since these things cannot be denied, you ought to be quiet and do nothing rashly. For you have brought these men here who are neither robbers of temples nor blasphemies of the goddess. Therefore, if Demetrius and his fellow craftsmen have a case against anyone, the courts are open, and there is a prosecutor, let them bring charges against them. But if you have any other inquiry to make, it shall be determined in the lawful assembly. For we are in danger of being called in question for today's uproar, there being no reason which we give account for this disorderly gathering. And when he has said these things, he dismissed the assembly. Family, when you know that it ain't, it, when you know that it ain't nothing but some mess going on over there, stop going. When you know that every time you go over there, the same thing happens. Why you keep going back? I know, I know that's your, I know that's your sister. I know that's your cousin. I know that's your family. I know y'all, I know y'all the same blood. But every time you go over there, you get hurt. Why keep going? You may be fellowshipping somewhere where every time you go there, you get put in the wrong category. But we keep going because of habitual reasons. My mama went there. I got to keep going there. My daddy went there. He used to, he used to be the pastor. Instead of saying enough is enough, I have to break ties of anything that's not in line with God's word. The power of one. power of one is God the source, and, and the rest follows underneath. There can only be one. Me and you put together will not make the power of one. Uh, all of us together will not combine to the power of one because there's only one God. And he must be seen that way. He must be respected that way. He must be honored that way. And our actions must exemplify how he would do it. Yeah, that was a, that was a big fad, WWJD. I loved it because it was a good question to ask. Before you make any decision, what would Jesus do? Point blank, bottom line. No ifs, ands, and buts about it. Oh, yes, because we didn't think of it. We, we didn't buy into it. I never, I, I was always for the WWJD because what a testimony. I'm glad they came up with it. I wish it would have been me. But since it wasn't, I'm going to glorify God for them because that is such a reminder we need to have. Before you do anything, what would Jesus do? Stop wondering what your your wife would do, or what your friends would do, or what they would have done. We must rely on what Jesus would do. And it's right here in the Word. Right here in the Word. You, we're, we're learning it very clearly here in the books of Acts, that we got to stay mindful, that we got to stay conscious, that we must be on alert at all times. And most of all, it's our responsibility for the things that are happening in our lives, not God. God did it all. God is providing everything you need according to your faith, according to your activating the principle in your life. Work on your heads this weekend for the rest of your life. Make sure that every pillar, see, I have seven pillars in my head. Yours may have 10. Yours may be 30. Yours may be one. Well, no, you need more than one to, to make a hedge out of But. We must start to work on the hedge of protection around and about us. That we know that we know that we know it ain't happening up in here. How many times do you question, what are you doing wrong? Oh, Jesus. How many times do you question, is that my fault? How many times do you question or doubt yourself that you should have said no or you should have said yes? If you could just say yes to one of those things, yo, the hedge that's protecting you may have a little bit of weakness somewhere. And it's our job as family to make sure the complete hedge is, 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 is fortified. It's complete. 
That's when you can say, not up in this house. Up in this house, we will praise the Lord. You can't make a statement like that when you know the back door is still open. <laughs> you can't make a statement like that when the windows don't even lock. You can't make a statement like that when they can sneak through the garage. That's because everything is not protected. Family, let's go higher. Let's take this word as truth. Let's absorb it. Let's walk in this word and look at the examples that what is going on then is going on now. These examples tell us that we got to be watchful of what people worship. Everybody's not praising God like you, family. Everybody's not trying to get to the kingdom like you are, family. Some people think they're already in the kingdom. That's why we can't be conformed to this world, but, but be, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you can see the new world that comes from heaven to earth. When? Right now. It's only by your thinking. It's only by your transformation. It's only by your willingness to do something better than you just did. If I preach, if I preach a sermon five minutes ago, I'm trying to preach a better one now. I want to study harder. I want to go deeper. I want to know more. I want more of God, less of me, more of him. And he ain't failed me yet. Got a little testimony I want to share with you before we close today. I am truly a, I am truly a believer and a walker in healing. We did a stage play on, on Tuesday here in Houston called Freedom. It was a, it was a black history uh, play by James Hudson and Showtime, which I'm a part of that group also. But we did the play there. And when I got there, they, had, they were trying to con- con- construct the background to go up, and nobody could do it. Well, Pastor Ed took the coat off, and Pastor Ed's carpenter came out, and I put it together in excellence. But there were some people around me that weren't in excellence. There were some people that weren't conscious as I was. And as I was working, now, now mindful, I came there dressed in a suit with some, sh- with some dress shoes, and I'm working in my dress clothes to, to help this production to go forward. And lo and behold, out of the contraption I put together, all of a sudden, a 15-pound weight drops. This 15-pound weight. Now, here it is, Pastor Ed, working in construction around a bunch of people in an stu- in a, in a, in a, uh, auditorium waiting to see the play. First thing that happened was that weight fell, and it fell right on Pastor E's foot. And I promise you, family, this is not over uh, exaggerating. It felt like that weight hit my foot, went through my bone, hit the floor, bounced up, and fell off. Of course it was painful. But because of my relationship with him, I was able to grab hold of that piece of wood, speaking in tongues immediately, because the show must go on. And this show wasn't about me, it was about him. And I just said out in front of everybody, right now, in the name of Jesus, this foot is healed, it's not broke. It may have a little pain, but it will not break. I will be able to walk. I will go forward right now in the name of Jesus. The pain went away. A little tweak here, but the show went forward. I got home that night, took my boot off, took some pictures of it and sent it out and said, look what happened. Nothing had happened to my toe, family. All you could see was one line going across my toe where the weight hit. Mm. But didn't swell it up, didn't nothing. Well, then my roommate was saying to me, he said, man, you going to put ice on it? I said, no, because I already, he, now he was there when it happened. He saw my face. He, he said, man, I couldn't have held that one in. Mm. He said, man, boy, and, and I walked away from that place healed. Got home, took All my right. thing, he saw it. He said, man, you ain't going to put ice on it? I said, no. I woke up the next morning. Yes, there was a little coloration, but Pastor E is walking right now. No pain, Come on, no man. breaks, right. no nothing. Now, by walking in God's favor and being willing to – watch this. It wasn't me. I had no power. But the word, whoo, Jesus, the word was so um, prolific. The word was claimed in authority. And the mm-hmm. healing was dispensed into my body as soon as I spoke it. Mm. Not a week later, not after, you know, not after, well, it didn't break. I just got to get the swelling down. No, my faith, my faith activated immediately. It didn't take a week. It didn't take two weeks. It didn't take a minute. Immediately when I claimed the name of Jesus on my toe, 
<laughs> I still got the pictures on my phone if you want to see them. There's a little discoloration around the uh, the nail. But where, where it hit was way up by the knuckle on the big toe. No signs of anything. That's Jesus walking in his word. It's not us. It's not by power. It's not by might. But it's by his divine spirit, saith the Lord. Miracles are available. Healing is available. Transformation is available right now, immediately, in the name of Jesus, just by your faith and the word that you speak. Let God use you in such an awesome way that the power and the glory of him manifests through you right now in the name of Jesus. No more fear, no more doubt, no more pain, but nothing but joy and the anointing of the Lord on your life to go and make disciples. In Jesus' name today, we claim it. In Jesus' name, we stand on it. In Jesus' name, we demand it by the blood of Jesus that anything you do that's in line with his word shall come to pass right now in the name of Jesus. I thank God for you. Family, I do love, appreciate, honor you in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you today, Lord, that your word has went forth. Lord, we thank you today, Lord, that, it, that, that there's no, not even a question of void. Lord, we thank you that your word is powerful and that it, it, it brings life. It brings change. It holds us accountable and pushes us and demands excellence out of us. We thank you for that today. Lord, we pray for every ear that has heard that their life has been changed immediately. We thank you right now, Lord, for, for, for new destiny. Evangelist Bernard, Minister Ruby, my family, thank you, Lord, that as we stand in the gap for them, that they're standing in the gap for us, too. That as we pray for them, they're praying for us, too. That as we're blessed, they're blessed, too. As we grow, they grow, too. That there's no lack in this relationship. We pray for no lack in this relationship. We pray for no lack. We know that Evangelist Bernard is about to return home, but we pray right now that you leave Stockton in order. We pray right now that the work that she's done, somebody's about to take it over and stand in the spot that she has, has been praying for forever. We pray that the excellence will go forth and that we'll continue Stockton moving on in this, in this planting, in this going, and this, this making disciples. And we thank you today, Lord. We thank you. We praise you. We magnify your name for you alone are worthy. Have your awesome way. We thank you today. We praise you in Jesus' name.